All right, so we are going to talk about 4G. And 4G is LTE advanced. So we will talk about what is the requirement for 4G and why LTE advanced is 4G. Then some of the new features. And this lecture, as well as the next two lectures, you will notice that these are the, some of the latest developments in communications, wireless communications. And so, with that, let us pay attention to these. So, what is 4G? 4G is officially defined by ITU. Okay, ITU is the International Telecommunication Union, which means the telephone companies organization under uh, UNO, United Nations, yeah, United Nations organization. And they have a recommendation called M.2134-2008, which you can get on the internet somehow. And that defines in complete detail what the 4G should do. Okay. And that was written back in 2008, even before LTE came into being. Okay. LTE came into being in 2008. So before that, they had written 4G already. And the 4G said it should be IP based, there should be 1 gig peak rate for 6 services, things are not moving, with 100 megahertz of spectrum and 100 megabits for mobile going at 500 kilometers per hour. And they also specified the spectral efficiency, how many bits per hertz you should get. Inside the cell you get 2.2 and at the edge you might get 0 0.6. So obviously edge is very far, cell, you know, center is very close and um, the peak efficiency could be 15. So when you are just next to the tower, you should be able to get 15 bits per head. Okay. And on the uplink, 1.40.36.75 and so on. And then the seamless connectivity and global roaming with smooth handovers. So you should be able to go anywhere in the world and so on and so forth and high quality multimedia. And then competition started. Basically LTE did not satisfy it and not neither did the Bimax. Bimax was there in 2008. And so both of them started working on the next generation of their technology. Bimax started on Bimax 2 and LTE started working on LTE Advanced. To meet, the, to meet these goals and both of them did. Okay, so when the time came for competition, both of the technologies are 4G, except that the market and the deployed service provider, the, tel LTE, the, the telephone community has really adopted LTE. Okay, and so WiMAX is not going anywhere, but it is, it was, and it is 4G. So. As we noticed that 3GPP, 3GPP is the third generation partnership project. That's the organization which designs internet, so that designs the telecommunication protocols. First it was doing just for the Europe, now it is doing for the world. We had 3GPP2 in the United States, but now everybody is going to 3GPP. And um, they just keep generating new releases every year. Previously. Releases were called by the year, so they have released 1999, released 2000 and so on. Then they said sometimes in one year they get more than one release, sometimes they don't get any release, so they got rid of the years and they got started with the numbers. So LTE is UMTS release 8 and uh, UMTS you know is 3G, right? So release 8 of that became LTE and release 10 is LTE advanced. 4G and they keep working right now they are in L release 14 and we will talk about that too and and then maybe release 15 16 will become 5G so the goal is to meet or exceed IMT advanced requirements and so they did basically they can produce 3 gigabits downlink and um, 1 1500 megabits not 1 1.5 it is 1 comma see sometimes it's French and English get mixed up so comma becomes a period and period becomes a comma. But this is 1.5 gig uplink at low mobility. It's not going at 500 kilometers per hour, low mobility, using 100 megahertz. 
spectral efficiency instead of 15 they are able to get 30 bits per hertz using 8 by 8 MIMO in the downlink 15 bits per hertz using 4 by 4 MIMO in the uplink all right these are extreme numbers obviously we are not going to use 4 by 4, 4, 4 <coughs> MIMO on the uplink otherwise you will be carrying a truck with you or you know you are not going to use 8 by 8 either because it's tough so much but this is possible and DL downlink spectral efficiency is 3.7 bits per hertz per cell assuming 4 by 4 2.4 bits assuming 2 by 2 and so on and so forth so they exceeded basically they met the requirement and the downlink of spectral efficiency similarly was 0. Point. by the way we get better in downlink because the down you know is coming from the base station uplink we are tiny transmitters so you get less right so downlink efficiency is only 0. 0.12 compared to 3.7 there right and um, and these are the numbers right so the numbers you don't have to remember but you have to remember at least the downlink is is easier than the uplink because that is always the case right the MIMOs are always higher on the downlink because you have big antenna they are difficult to do on the uplink and so on so some of these common principles you should know all right so LTE advance is release 10 and it says 2011 H1 that's a notation for first half okay Q is the quarter half is H so when they say Q2 that means second quarter when they say H1 that is first half and the second half right Q1 Q2 Q3 Q4 there are four quarters in a year and two halves in a year right so this is H1 so before June they got it there I mean before July 1st let me put it this way to be exact all right so this is five years old technology now now having said five years old technology basically what it is is that it takes one or two years to come into the market because once the standards are done people start making chips this and that and making equipment and then deploying it so you may not have seen too much of 4G stuff but I mean we have started seeing it now it's 2016 so but it was the standard itself is dated 2011 half first half continuing on the latency less than 10 milliseconds from dormant to active so if, if you are not doing anything and you need to make a call it takes 10 milliseconds and 50 milliseconds from camped to active and if you are sleeping then you will get 50 milliseconds so it, it is clear that the camped is more bigger sleep than dormant okay Mobility up to 500 kilometers per hour, it does. And spectrum availability flexibility, it does both FDD and TDD. Again, the last D is for duplex, right? And so it does both frequency division duplexing and the time division duplexing. Wider channels up to 100 megahertz. And it can do up to 100 megahertz wide channels because we need to produce that one gigabit challenge, right? We need to meet that one gigabit challenge. So this one says the latency is, is measured in many different ways. One is that if I try to make a phone call and it takes five minutes to make a phone call, which in, in some cases actually it does take a few seconds. When I make a phone call, I don't hear the ring until a few seconds. So that is one latency, right? Here it is just the latency of being able to transmit. Okay. So if you are um, if you are in the dormant state and we haven't defined what is the dormant state, right? But if you are active, you might be able to get in LTE, we know that the frames are 1 millisecond. So if you are requested something within the next millisecond, you will be able to transmit it, you know, if everything is available. If it is busy, then maybe you have to wait many frames. But if the frames are available, then the next frame you will get it. Right, so 1 millisecond. So that is a different kind of latency. So latency is measured at many different levels. One is how long does it take when you want to transmit a packet? How long does it take when you want to make a connection? How long does it take, you know, to just get on the network? And this one is talking about getting on the network. Um, why is the mobility up to 500 kilometers per hour? Why okay. is that the standard? Yeah, so that's kind of high. I mean, I have never driven at 500 kilometers per hour. And if you drive in the United States, they will give you a ticket, but in Europe they do. So, <laughs> no, actually the thing is, in Europe the speeds are generally faster. I mean, you know that, right? Anybody who has gone to Europe, Germany or anything like that knows that the roads drive faster but this is more for high-speed trains 
So if you have really high speed trains, which basically don't have to worry about other traffic coming in the way, they just go straight on the track, they can go 500 kilometers per hour. Okay, and you can translate that into speeds divided by 1.6 and you get about 300 miles per hour. That's very 